Hey there riders, Motojourno Chris here today and I have been lent this Svartvillain 401. This is the 2020 edition by Moto Hub here in Sydney in Castle Hill and I'm having a look at the updates on this bike and a little bit of a quick refresher about what this bike offers because I think it's one of the most impressive options available when it comes to just what you get for the price. And part of that is because these motorcycles originally were about $11,000 here in Australia. They dropped the price by $4,000 to get them moving because obviously that was a little bit hard of a sell in the beginner bike category. However, now at $7,000 Australian dollars with that price reduction seen around the world, these are an exceptional value option. There's a lot of extras that you won't see anywhere else in the beginner bike category, and it's still an awesome machine, which is gonna be really great for even a more experienced rider who wants a small machine, but something, you know, with a bit of craze to it, uh, something a little bit unusual. The styling's unusual, but it's a very aggressive machine as well. So there's a lot going for this. Uh, the changes, you're getting a quick shifter as standard, and it's not just an up quick shifter, it's an up and down quick shifter. And I've been really impressed, it works really well. Obviously all quick shifters have a little bit of a limitation. If you're just using it at the wrong revs, you might find that it's a little bit clunkier, but honestly, uh, overall, I found it worked really, really well. The other thing to keep in mind is these ones have got an extended subframe on them, that's the 2020 model, to make it a little bit more comfortable for the pillion and to make it obviously a stronger subframe. And uh, they've, they've done that because obviously the feedback they've been given is despite this being such a crazy, you know, cafe racer style machine with, you know, like a bit of scrambler theme to it as well, people still want to chuck somebody on the back, uh, you know, sometimes. and. Uh, that's still a consideration. And so Husqvarna have listened to that. The other thing to keep in mind is with that price drop originally, these use the KTM 390 engine. Uh, they are, most of the components are made in India. However, they were being assembled in Austria, which was part of that premium appeal. Now these are made in India and that is part of the reason why they've been able to keep the costs so low. And I've got to say, when you look at this motorcycle, there's a lot of features which really speak to that higher price, but at the end of the day, now you're getting it at this exceptionally low price of $7,000 Australian, which is a really hard to beat deal. So one of the really big standout features on the Spark Pillin 401, as you can see here, is you're getting spoked wheels. And not only are you getting spoked wheels, you are getting tubeless tires on it as well. And these are a dual purpose tire. So it's got that scrambler theme to it. You just don't see that in this category, particularly at that $7,000 buy-in mark. This is very unusual. These rims are really high quality and something you just won't get anywhere else. On top of that, you're getting a Biber, four piston caliper on the front, 300 millimeter rotor. That is another really nice high spec piece of kit and the brakes on this are tremendous. That is then backed up by the WP Apex suspension and it's adjustable suspension. Again, practically unheard of in this price range and in this smaller capacity beginner category. Then on top of that, you're getting the LED lighting, very futuristic, you know, people are either gonna love or hate this bike, I think, because of that really, really futuristic styling. But personally, I think it's really nice. And the single round headlight is something that most people do like. You've got LED indicators as well as standard, full LED lighting all around, which is a nice feature to see and very premium, particularly considering the price of these bikes. Another big standout on these motorcycles and on the KTM 390s is that 373cc single cylinder engine. It's very much that race inspired kind of engine, which is something that you'd expect out of KTM and obviously Husqvarna have been able to take advantage of that as well. In the Husqvarna, it's getting some fancy engine cases. It does have a slip and assist clutch. And basically speaking, it's got a nice, quite gentle throttle open, which makes it ideal for a new rider. However, it is a very, very punchy single as you get up into that mid range and up towards the top end as well, where say the Honda CB300 drops off in the top end, this thing pulls like anything. It's got 44 horsepower, 32 kilowatts. It's right up there in the performance stakes as far as what you can buy as a new rider if you're looking in this kind of capacity. Really the only thing which gives you more is gonna be the Kawasaki 400 without moving further up through the rev range. And again, it's got the quick shifter, uh, very nice engine. There's a little bit of vibes through the bike, but very little. It's quite a smooth single cylinder and it's just a really nice power plant. 
Other points of mention, obviously you're getting this great kind of single piece bodywork, which is the tank all the way back. The styling on this is really futuristic. It's really out there. Again, as I said, it's something that people tend to love or hate. I think the only styling element that I'd probably like to see changed is maybe some bar and mirrors on this, but that's a very small criticism because these mirrors really do the job very, very well. And uh, I just think that that would kind of clean up the style of the bike and match everything else. But again, you know, that's kind of a silly thing to ask for because at the price range, you're just getting so much value for your money. You've got adjustable levers on both sides, so clutch and brake lever. You've got this cool looking exhaust as well, which looks a little bit like a custom exhaust. Not the full way there, but you know, it's an exhaust that you probably wouldn't need to change for looks unless you want a little bit more volume which I can certainly understand. You've got this cool seat, it is a two-piece seat, uh, you can kind of see the join here. It's a smallish pillion seat but at the same time I just don't think that's a huge focus of this particular machine. You've got a nice seat here as well, relatively comfortable, it's a very minimalistic seat and while there's a lot of angles here I don't find that's an issue at all because the bike is very very narrow between the legs. One of the only things I will mention for new riders is this is an 835 millimeter seat height, which is a tall seat height for an entry level motorcycle. So if you're on the shorter side of things, you will need to consider whether it's gonna work for you or not. Now, as far as the Svartpilen 401, how it rides, it is a very unique option, I would say. It's probably the closest to the Duke 390, uh, but there are some styling elements which are quite different. The handling on this machine is just absolutely insanely aggressive. It's not gonna be overwhelming for a new rider, but I guess the way I'd describe it is on most bikes, even the smaller, you know, fast turning, agile little learner bikes in this category, most of them when you're thinking about how the bike is turning a corner uh, and your general riding, it's all about arcs. Whereas on this thing, the handling is just so aggressive and you've got, you know, so much input from those very wide bars that it's much more about squaring off those corners because you can absolutely turn this bike on a dime. Now, obviously that makes it a more aggressive turn up, but it also makes it a really, really fun thing to ride because you can just absolutely smash it out. And with the way that single cylinder offers that really punchy mid range and top end, and also how you've got that quick shifter to access that without having to worry about the clutch all the time, it makes it a super engaging machine to really ride super, super aggressively. And that's why I think that while it's a, you know, a great bike for a new rider who wants a lot of potential, it's also gonna be a motorcycle, which for a much more experienced rider is gonna be really, really rewarding if they want that kind of hoon machine, because it's definitely got that going for it. Also, as mentioned, you know, it's got the powerful brakes. It's got a very nicely set up suspension system. It's a very refined suspension system. Probably the thing I would compare it to is how Yamaha have just updated on the MT-03 and the R3, their suspension system, particularly the MT-03. It's got that really nice refined premium feel to it. It's sporty, it's well supported, not too harsh. It was only over the harshest bumps really. The rear was getting a tiny little bit out of shape. I'd occasionally get kind of a harsh bump through, but generally speaking, it's a super comfortable thing to ride. Uh, while still being aggressive. It feels very, very compact as far as the overall feel of the bike. And that is in contrast to the fact that it's got a tall seat height. I'm used to an 830 millimeter seat height because that's what my Daytona has. I'm very, very comfortable with that. That's kind of my natural seat height, I guess you'd say, because I've had that bike for a number of years. But the overall feel of this bike is very light. It's very compact. It's not, it's not actually cramped at all, despite the fact that you might think uh, that that would be the case. It's not like I'm feeling cramped on the bike. I feel like I've actually got a lot of room. The foot peg placement is ideal for getting the weight through your pegs or getting your feet up on the pegs and really committing to the bike. So again, really nicely designed as far as the overall ergonomic of this machine. I'm just super impressed with really coming back to the bike and seeing, you know, a couple of small improvements. The price kept right down low, really affordable for new riders. It's gonna be a hard choice to kind of go over if you like the look of the bike because you're not gonna find anything else like this. And if you were to customize any of the competition to look like this, you're gonna be spending an enormous amount of money. So, you know, just the wheels alone, just the tubeless wheels, they are big money. So super, super impressed. Finally, one of the things I'd definitely say is the detail work on this particular motorcycle is really good. There's just details everywhere which really stand out. Obviously, you've got this light, 
luggage area on the tank here. It's a bit of a rack. It only takes a limited amount of weight, according to Husqvarna, but you've got other details which really stand out. You know, the top of the triple with spot pillin on it, uh, there's just little bits and pieces everywhere that if you spend time with the bike, you're really going to appreciate because every time you look at the bike, there's something extra which stands out and catches the eye, which again, for the price point, that's something you expect in a, you know, 15 or $20,000 bike, not a $7,000 bike on the road or a $7,100 bike on the road. So an enormous thanks go to Moto Hub in Castle Hill. If you're interested in Husqvarna's, KTM's, Kawasaki's, check them out. They are my local dealer. That's where I get the Ninja 400 service and they've very generously lent me the bike for a couple of hours so I could do these videos. So definitely drop in if you are interested in those machines and in the area. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, just let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Hit sub, that notification bell as well if you'd like to support the channel. Stay safe out there most importantly, and I'll be back soon. Thanks for watching.